Is Philip Hollander one of the best defensive wingers in this year's 2018 NHL entry draft? And how does his game compare to Alexander Steen's? Let's talk about it next. Welcome back to Hockey Scouting Report. So glad you're here. So glad you're watching. Today's video is on Philip Hollander, and he is one of the best defensive wingers in this year's draft. There are some issues with his game in the speed and acceleration department, but in terms of sheer production on the defensive end of the game, a very talented two-way force can put up numbers offensively and really parallels his game to Alexander Steen, who most people would agree is one of the best, if not the best, two-way and defensive wingers in the NHL today. So before we get into that, if you're new to the channel, I do videos every single day. We do a lot of scouting reports, especially up to the draft. We've done about 45 of them, so if there's any prospect that you want to see reviewed that I haven't yet, feel free to comment it below. And if there's anyone you're interested in, feel free to check out my channel. I might have already done a video on them. I also do some comparison videos, as well as deep looks at prospect pools. We've only done six of them, I believe, and we'll have another one coming out shortly. And then yesterday, I also did a very interesting video. It was about a 45-minute video, and it was a redraft of the 2015 NHL draft, which had Brock Besser, Matt Barzell, Miko Ronson, and Mitch Marner, Jack Eichel, and Connor McDavid, among others. An immensely talented draft. Feel free to check that video out if you haven't. Very interesting. But let's get right into the content. So lastly, feel free to check out my Twitter. It's at HockeyLevine, using the hashtag HockeyLevineTalk. Feel free to go there for any suggestions if you want to check out any posts that I have. I will always link the videos as soon as they're posted. You can also engage with me about talking with any prospect, whatever it is. Feel free to do so there. And then lastly, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button and of course subscribe for more content. So let's get right into it. So Philip Hollander, 17 years old, and he's one of the youngest guys in this draft. We talked about a lot of young guys recently, Adam Boquist being possibly the youngest of first-round eligible prospects that have first-round potential. Philip Hollander is projected to go anywhere from 35th to 45th, closer to that 40 to 45 range. But his birthday is June 29th, 2000. So he's born about eight days after the draft. So very young overall. And he's a center or wing. He can do either uh, setup. Most likely the NHL level, he will play on the wing probably on the right wing. And when we look at his size, 6'1", 185, he doesn't have ideal center size. He also does not have the speed and the acceleration to necessarily play a two-way pivot role in the center spot, but he also doesn't have the speed to burn you on the wing. So there are some certainly big issues with his game, but stylistically, he looks a lot like Alexander Steen, and he has put up numbers at decent levels already. And so this year, well, first of all, he's Swedish. This year he played in Alvaskan, 40 games played for Timra, 9 goals, 11 assists, 20 points. Also, 4 penalty minutes and a plus 6. It's a the second tier level of hockey in Sweden, but still a professional level. Coming in as a very young 17-year-old, did a very nice season. You can compare him to another guy that we've talked about, which is Jacob Olofsson. Olofsson this year also played for Timra. He put up 21 points, 10 goals, 11 assists in 43 games. So very similar production. And then in the playoffs, the qualification, of course, Timra did win the qualification. They're now in the SHL next season. Olofsson, 10 games played for that, three goals, one assist, four points. But if we compare that to Hollander, nine games played in the qualification, one goal, one assist, two points. So Olofsson is projected to go anywhere from 28th to 33. Hollander, a little bit worse than that largely because his international play has not been as good as Olofsson. Olofsson played at the World Juniors under 18 and the Internationals under 18 and under 20. Hollander only had the under 18s this year, of course, the Lincoln Memorial as well. But overall, his numbers have been very strong. 20 points in 40 games for Alvascon, 9 goals. Overall, very strong, considering that he was getting 3rd and 4th line minutes, and he's a more of a defensive winger to begin with. Very good numbers overall. If you look at his international play, international juniors under 18 for Sweden, 13 games played, 4 goals, 3 assists, 7 points, 6 penalty minutes, and a plus 4. So once again, we see he's a positive force. He can be physical, but he also puts up decent offensive production. At the Lincoln Memorial, he really got himself on the dot for this year's draft. 5 games played, 3 goals, 1 assist, 4 points, and he did take home the bronze medal for Sweden. So a good showing there as well. 
If we look at his numbers last year, he played in the Super Elite, their junior system. 34 games played, 9 goals, 15 assists, 24 points, 14 penalty minutes, and a plus 11. So even back then, we can see, yes, he has a bit of a goal-scoring touch. He can be a playmaker, but number one, he's a positive force on the ice. He's a physical force when needed, and he can do a two-way role. In the playoffs, he did have no points. So he's not extremely clutch, which... We do talk about a lot of prospects that are clutch in the playoffs. We see that he didn't have much of a showing there. He did not have much of a showing in the qualification for Timra. Of course, they're going to play older guys who have more experience then anyways. He did do a decent job with those two points, but being clutch is not one of his assets. Yes, he did very nicely internationally, but we just have not seen enough of him to see if he could under pressure. We look at someone like Brady Kachuk or Philip Sedina or Andrei Sechnikov, we have seen time and time again how great they are under pressure. We just haven't seen that with Hollander yet. And well, if we look at Hollander's numbers internationally last season to see any growth, well, last year he also played at the World Hockey Championship under 17, six games played, only one goal. So we can see he's not really doing that great internationally a gold medal. He also went to the International Juniors under 17, assistant captain, 17 games played, 6 goals, 6 assists, 12 points. A decent showing overall, but he's still playing against people at that level that were the same age as him. It's not as if someone like Jacob Olofsson, who came to the under 20s, playing against people 2 years older than him and did do a decent job. That's not something that Hollander has done, and so that is quite a knock to his game. Not that he's a bad prospect, but in terms of similar rated prospects, he will fall to about the mid-second round because he's not as clutch as international play is not as strong. If you look at the year before, though, even before that, international under-16s, six games played, three goals, one assist, four points. So he's always been a bit of a goal scorer, and he's always been someone who's played internationally. He may not have been exceptional, but he's never been bad. If you look at this year internationally, like I mentioned, 13 games played, 4 goals, 3 assists, 7 points. It's not terrible. You would like to see better, but it's certainly not bad. And so if we look at his overall skills in his game, like I mentioned, similar to Jacob Olofsson statistically, but the skills, what really separates the two is that Hollander has a nose to the net. He's someone who can be a power forward. When we see him kind of shifting to the wing, that's what he'll do in the NHL. He resembles a lot of a power forward type mentality. Plays very strong in front of the net. Someone who can screen the goalie, but a very physical presence in front of the net. Always has that nose to the net. He's a good skater overall. He has a very powerful and long stride. Something that we see with a lot of power forwards. So he really has that mentality about him. Very good balance. He's not going to be shaken off the puck much. Strong play in front of the net, like I mentioned. He also has the size to do so. 6'1", 185. He also uh, has very good edge work, and so this allows him to make those cuts and make those physical plays that he needs to do. He also has a very strong and accurate shot, and he has soft hands. We've seen him become a goal scorer internationally to certain levels. Those soft hands certainly attribute to that. He also makes good passes, crisp passes. He is a good stick handler and good work ethic. He also has very good hockey sense and IQ from the back end, very good vision from down ice from the back end, and he works very well defensively. His game is built defensively, but there are two main flaws in his game, and they're very big flaws, and that is he has a low top speed and his acceleration is bad. Yes, he takes powerful and long strides, but he doesn't get to those strides fast enough. His first two steps, especially that first step, is not there. It's not quick. It's not powerful. You want to see that first step be powerful. You want to see him break out and get that game-breaking speed. He doesn't have that. And so as power forwards, oftentimes, they have speed that can beat you on the on the sides, on the back end. He does not have that. Yes, he's playing more of a defensive role, but he also doesn't have the speed to come back and make those back checks and get those turnovers. He does not have that speed. What he does have is strong defensive positioning, mentality, hockey IQ, hockey sense. So he shouldn't be out of position anyways to use that speed. But at the NHL level, does he really have the speed to be able to play at a, uh, at a level that is so much faster than what he's ever seen? He certainly needs to work on his speed and his acceleration. It doesn't have to be at an elite level, but it has to be decent. His skating is fairly good. His edge work is very good. So he does have the fundamentals to build on, and everything else is not an issue. But the speed and, uh, the speed and acceleration will limit his potential significantly. And so his projection is a third-line defensive force who can put up offensive numbers. He's not going to be a top line forward. He probably won't be a second line forward. He doesn't have the speed 
or the acceleration to stay at that level and play with high-level players. You look at Connor McDavid, very few players can play with him because they don't have the speed. Jesse Poyarvi drafted fourth overall in the 2016 NHL draft right after Pierre-Luc Dubois ran in front of Ole Levy, Matthew Kachuk. He has not been able to fit with Connor McDavid. He hasn't even been able to fit with Leon Dreisaitl. He has not had the speed and certainly not the acceleration to do that. But he does have a strong shot. He does have the body. And he has a physical game to him. So he may end up being a third-line presence who can be a power play specialist. Now, you don't want to see someone drafted fourth overall be a third-line player. You wouldn't draft him that uh, high up if you knew that. But that's what we're talking about. When you don't have the speed, you get relegated to the third line. Puyarvi looks to be that. Now, he can slide up to the second line. He is working on his speed. He is working on his first step, which has been one of the worst aspects of his game. But you want to know ahead of time what you're getting into. Philip Hollander, very similar. So Hollander's projected to be a third-line presence who can be physical, great defensively, but then also put up some numbers offensively. 15 goals, 30 assists for 45 points is the projection. So he can be a goal scorer. He will put up some assists, good playmaker, good hands, but overall he's going to be a very positive force on the ice, and he will put up some penalty minutes. Now his comparison, like I mentioned earlier and in this video title, is Alexander Steen. Alexander Steen, 34 years old. He's a left winger, 6'0", 212. One of the best, if not the best, defensive wingers in the NHL today. We often talk about defensive centers. We look at uh, Patrice Bergeron as one of the best, if not the best. We don't talk about defensive wingers nearly as much. Steen has always dominated that category, as have quite a few others. He has the size to do so, and he was drafted 24th overall in the 2002 draft, the Rick Nash, Kari Lettinen draft, by the Leafs. He played three years with the Leafs and then nine with the Blues so far. He's been an assistant captain for the Blues. He does have leadership qualities, and he has a very strong work ethic. So that alone compares him to Hollander. But if we look statistically, this year, 76 games played, 15 goals, 31 assists, 46 points, 20 penalty minutes. That is exactly the statistical comparison that I gave Hollander. So when, I'm not using that as a direct comparison, but you can see the production is very similar. Steen obviously out of his prime at 34, but similar overall production. Last year for Steen, 76 games played, 16 goals, 35 assists, 51 points, 53 penalty minutes. That's what we're going to see from Hollander. If he can reach a higher level of speed and acceleration, he could be a 50-point player, but absolutely those 53 penalty minutes, very possible for him. In the playoffs, Steen that year, 10 games played, 3 goals, 4 assists, 7 points. Now, Steen is an injury risk. It's not something that we've seen with Philip Hollander, so that's not really a comparison. Steen is a major injury risk. He's never had a perfect season of all 82 games except for his second season in the NHL with the Leafs. But if you look at all his seasons, counting back from the most recent in games played, 76, 76, 67, 74, 68, 40, that 40 was in the lockout year, 43, 72, 68, 81, 76, 82, and then 75. So aside from that second season, he's been a major injury risk every single season, missing at least five or more games in every season but two. That's very impressive. Uh, in, in a bad way impressive and for the career total in numbers 898 games played 228 goals 350 assists 578 points 0.64 points per game so we're not talking about someone who is not offensive Alexander Steen absolutely can be a second line player that's because he does have decent acceleration and speed it's not top level so he really can't be a first line player he has been but really his game is designed especially now at this age to be a second line player but a great aspect of his game is how he plays on the penalty kill he also has 428 penalty minutes for his entire career in the playoffs, 61 games played, 13 goals, 18 assists, 31 points, 0 0.51 points per game, and 54 penalty minutes. So we see, once again, positive force on the ice, can put up numbers offensively, but he's also a grinder, also a physical defensive player. In his draft year, to compare it to Hollander, Steen played in the Super Elite, 23 games played, 21 goals, 17 assists, 38 points. Significantly more than Hollander had in the year before this year in the Super Elite. Hollander didn't play in the Super Elite this year, only did one game, no points, but he probably would have had a similar showing. But Steen did play in the SHL that same season, so we can make a similar comparison, SHL to Alvassan. Uh, 26 games played for Steen, only three assists, three points. So yes, the competition is higher in the SHL, 
But if we're comparing someone who put up 21 points versus only three, even considering the league differences, competitive differences, you can see that someone like Hollander is performing better offensively than Steen going into that draft. And then the following year for Steen in the SHL, 45 games played, 5 goals, 10 assists, 15 points. Hollander will be in the SHL for Tim Run next year. 15 points, 5 goals is absolutely not out of the question for him. He showed to be a nice presence for Timra. The entire team is moving up to the SHL. He should continue to get the minutes he already has, if not more. 15 points is not out of the question for Hollander. If you look at the skills that Steen brings to his game, one of the best defensive wingers in the league, like I mentioned. Also great hockey IQ, great hockey sense, good vision from the back end. So very similar to Hollander. Also a good skater, overall good shot. The accuracy of the shot is questioned, but it's not it's not terrible. He's a playmaker, very technically skilled, good edge work, but not top level speed or acceleration. But the edge work allows him to make these cuts and be an offensive player when needed. We've seen him go up uh, 60 plus points, I believe twice in his career. And so it's a fit overall. We can see that someone who is a two-way player can be offensive, but also one of the best defensive wingers in the league. Hollander will be that when he hits that NHL level. And so what is the best fit for Philip Hollander in the NHL? What team would do best drafting him? There's really a few teams that I think would do very nicely, but there's one that I think it's a great fit. And so if you look at the second round, 35th to 45th is where he's going. In theory, the Sabres could take him at 31, but there's better players available at that point. The Canadians obviously have picks early in the uh, second round. The Red Wings do as well. So either team could benefit from taking him. If it was the Red Wings, he probably ends up playing on the left wing, not the right. Canadians probably on the right wing. Either would benefit from taking him, a third line player who can be two-way. But I think the best fit is at 37th overall. Assuming they don't trade up or trade down, that is the Vancouver Canucks. Now, Canucks management and Jim Benning have said that they're considering moving picks up in this draft in order to move higher in the draft. So perhaps 37th will not be available to them at the draft. But assuming it is, it's right in the middle of where we're projecting Hollander to be available. And the Canucks, if we look at their future top six core... Next year, not all these guys will be there. But if we're talking about two years from now, their top six is going to be Bo Horvat, Elias Pettersson. Either he's at the center or at the wing. He doesn't really have the body to be a center. He's more of a sniper for the wing anyways. But you'll have those two. Cole Lynn should probably be there in about two seasons. Jonathan Dolan could be there next year, certainly the year after. Brock Besser's already there. And then Jonah Gadjevich, I talked about him a little bit in the Vancouver Canucks prospect pool analysis I did about a month ago. Feel free to check that out if you haven't. Gadjevich should probably be there in a couple seasons. If not, Petrus Palmu could be there. He signed an entry-level contract with them just a little while ago. And then Adam Goodette, someone who did very nicely in the NCAA, could step up, played five games this year, could step up and be a top six player for them. He's a center. Perhaps he's that second line center if Pedersen goes to the wing. So that's the top six for the Canucks long term in a couple seasons. It's a very offensive one. You have snipers and Besser and Pedersen. Lind and Dahlen will shore up the left wing as nice playmakers, but also goal scorers. Horvat, a good center, probably not a number one center in terms of elite play, but someone who can absolutely be a 50, 60 point player. And then Gadjevich is someone who can also fill in as a very nice player. Palmu, undersized, but very talented. And then goodette has got a lot of potential as a center. So a talented top six. But if we look at their bottom six, they want to add grinders. They want to add two-way players. They really have two of them right now. They could add in a third in Philip Hollander and have this great third line. And right now they have uh, Brandon Guantz and Jake Vertanen. And so if we look at it, people might say both are busts, but absolutely not. Vertanen, 21 years old, right wing, 6'1", 229. Great size, power forward, very young. This year, 75 games played, 10 goals, 10 assists, 20 points. It was his first full-time, entire full-time, basically, 75 games in the NHL. And it was his highest statistical season. He's an excellent skater. He's a great hitter. Put up 46 penalty minutes this year. Probably could see 80 when he's fully uh, adept into his game. And he's a power forward. Someone who resembles a lot of Chris Stewart in his game. But also, there is some Matthew Kachuk in his game as well. If Jake Vertanen can break out and be a third-line player instead of a fourth-line player, which he's been, if he gets more ice time, he gets some more penalty minute time, someone who can be a very nice physical presence for them and elevate his game in the goal-scoring category offensively when needed. 
If you look at their other players, like I mentioned, Brandon Gauntz, 26th overall pick in the 2012 draft. Bertanian, obviously, very early in his draft. Gauntz, 24. He's a two-way playmaker with size, 6'2", 217. This year, 37 games played, four goals, two assists, six points. So two players that aren't overly offensive. Bertanian does project to be about a 40-point player once he's hit his prime. There's certainly a lot of issues with this game. People have wanted to see him take a bigger step forward. But the main issue is he hasn't gotten the ice time to be the player that he is. And also, we know power forwards take a lot of time to develop. Ryan Kessler took a lot of time to develop. Bertanian should get there only 21. And so if you add in someone like Philip Hollander to this group, that would be an amazing third line to back up guys like Besser, Pedersen, Horvat, Lynn, Gadjevich, Dahlin. Backing up those guys would be great. And then you could also throw in someone like Gadet or Petrus Palmu into this group to make it more offensive. It'd be a very nice combination for the Canucks to build with offensively and to make up for their defensive group, which right now their main guy, of course, Alexander Edler, is someone who is getting older. And then if you throw in Oli Alevi, they need to add more of a two-way defensive force. Will they draft someone this year like Noah Dobson? Do they go Evan Bouchard with that chemistry already with the Ulevi? Whatever it is, they need to add a defensive punch. Someone like Philip Hollander would be excellent for that. So thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up. And of course, make sure to subscribe for more content. If you're a Canucks fan, comment below your thoughts. Do you think Hollander would be a really nice third-line presence for your team? And if you think Hollander is better than a third-line player, if his speed and acceleration can be better, do you, how high do you think his potential really is? Comment your thoughts below. And of course, I'll see you guys in the comment section and in the next video.